so I started my very first Velcade trial. It was 2006 and uh, happily, very happily, after about two or three treatments, uh, I got into a complete remission, which was great. The reward of taking a primary scientific observation and being able to go from the bench to the bedside in what we call translational medicine and change the natural history of a disease forever is just what we live for. Since it was approved in 2003, the drug Velcade, whose generic name is bortezomib, has been used to treat about 230,000 patients with multiple myeloma, radically changing the therapeutic landscape of this disease. Multiple myeloma is an aggressive cancer in which a particular type of blood cell multiplies and wreaks havoc in the bone marrow. Bortezomib can help keep the cancer cells in check. How did such an important drug come into being? The path to the clinic may surprise you. This story begins in the lab with cell biologist Alfred Goldberg Nearly 40 years ago, he took a break from medical school to study why muscles shrink when you don't use them. And I've never returned. In fact, officially, I'm a medical student on leave of absence. The initial research convinced us that uh, much of the control of size, for example, the size of muscles, was determined by protein breakdown. And the breakdown of proteins in cells had received very little attention. Goldberg and others accumulated evidence for a cellular structure he later named the proteasome. This exists in every cell and is the major machine for destroying proteins selectively. A protein that has been tagged for destruction is quickly recognized by the proteasome, which binds to it. The protein gets unfolded and injected into the central core particle of the proteasome, where knife-like components shown here in red, cut it to pieces. The resulting fragments are released back into the cell where they can be further broken down and reused in the assembly of new proteins. And these processes have to be exactly balanced. If there's too much degradation, for example, in a muscle, the muscle will atrophy, gets smaller. What does all of this have to do with multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma cells create lots of abnormal proteins, which must be continuously destroyed by the proteasome for the disease to progress. And that's just one way the proteasome keeps the cancer cells comfortable. The proteasome also activates a natural stress response that aids the harried, rapidly dividing multiple myeloma cells, allowing them to rally and keep growing. But scientists wouldn't make these connections until much later. Velcade's a good example of how information from the laboratory can have applications that are unforeseen, even by sophisticated researchers such as ourselves. Armed with preliminary information about the knife-like components of the proteasome, Goldberg gathered a group of researchers to explore blocking these sharp blades. In 1993, the team established a company with the goal of inhibiting the proteasome to treat muscle wasting. They quickly recruited medicinal chemist Julian Adams. The initial interest in the proteasome was, let's make tool compounds that would be used to interrogate the biology of the proteasome. Researchers used the tool molecules to inhibit the proteasome, and to their surprise, a cancer connection emerged. We had a conversation in the summer of 1994, I had just been at the company about six months, where the concepts around cancer started to reveal themselves. The company, now named Proscript, began to zero in on cancer as Adams worked to take the original tool molecule and turn it into a drug. He was aided by his first glimpse of the three-dimensional structure of the proteasome. I made the mental leap then that boronic acids that we had synthesized in the lab would be ideal partners to inhibit the proteasome, and that turned out to be correct experimentally. And then it was a question of now refining those boronic acid structures to make them more drug-like. Adams contacted the National Cancer Institute which tested the new molecules on various human tumors grown in the lab. 
when the results came back, they were astonishing. The molecules inhibited many different types of tumors. They also proved effective in animal models of cancer. Despite mounting successes, Proscript was running out of funding. In 1999, it was acquired by a company called Leukocyte, which was in turn acquired by a company called Millennium. We thought we had a very important investigational drug that needed our attention. And would this project survive in the portfolio of the new company? The team began testing Velcade on late-stage cancer patients in the clinic. And when a patient with advanced multiple myeloma was treated, she went into complete remission. I had to really sort of absorb the knowledge and actually dig into the disease of multiple myeloma because I was far from an expert. But I did know of Ken Anderson. So we had this wonderful preclinical data coupled with early, early clinical promise. And Julian Adams and I went to dinner with the president of Millennium Pharmaceuticals. His name was Mark Levin at the time. And basically presented him this data and implored him to please, please do a clinical trial of this novel agent in multiple myeloma. And in fact, very rapidly, there was the agreement to do this clinical trial. So we had a very strong pharma partnership. And then at the same time on the clinical side, we were very fortunate in having great partners in the myeloma world who worked with us in the trial. Ultimately, the summit trial enrolled actually 202 patients from across the country, multiple centers. When the trial data came back, when, it, you know, when single anecdotes turned to multiple uh, patients, it became clear that this was a very, very active agent. And basically, to cut a long story short, about a third of patients responded well, about another third stabilized, and about a remaining third, unfortunately, didn't derive benefit. But still, in patients in whom there were no other meaningful options left, this was a remarkable result. The next step was to get Velcade approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The team was armed with compelling data from the summit trial, which would soon be published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Drug approvals of phase two studies were pretty much very, almost unheard of at that time. And great credit to the FDA, they were willing to look at this. The team was persistent, and at 5.20 on May 13th of 2003, they received good news. Velcade had been approved. And there's no way I can even describe properly in words the, the moment in which we got FDA approval. I'm Matthew Murray, state police officer for 18 years. I'm 43 years old, two children, and uh, my experience with myeloma now has been going on about uh, six and a half years. As a person, and that sort of embodies why, you know, to be honest, in cancer medicine, whilst it can be very distressing and very intense and very, very emotionally draining, the flip is that you work with patients and families like Matt and his wife Carla and their children, and you, you realize the value of, of what we do together, you know, as a partnership. Despite Velcade's approval, Stem cell transplants are still the first defense against multiple myeloma, and Murray received two of them in 2005. About 18 months later, you know, myeloma made a, made a reappearance into my life, and we decided as a team, you know, my wife and I and, and Dr. Richardson, that, you know, a Velcade-based clinical trial would be probably the best thing for me at that time. The cancer cells quickly responded to the treatment, which kept the disease at bay for three and a half years. Murray visited Dana-Farber once a week to receive the drug intravenously. In those other six days a week, you know, life was back to normal. I was playing uh, men's league hockey, you know, a couple days a week. And uh, when I first got into complete remission, I decided that I would uh, uh, try to do a couple of triathlons. Murray accomplished his goal. He was also able to keep working and spend time with his wife and two sons. When the myeloma cells started to multiply again during the summer of 2010, Murray switched to a new treatment, a drug cocktail that put him back into complete remission. Back when I first started to study multiple myeloma as a freshman medical student 38 years ago, it was virtually untreatable. 
and patients honestly died within weeks to months. Now when I go to see a new patient in the clinic, I can actually look them in the eye and say, you know, on average, you're going to live at least 10 years and we think it's going to be longer with the development of subsequent novel drugs. But much of that progress is directly related to the development of Valkate.